General Babaya, welcome to the Bombay Sapper's Bicentenary Celebrations. You are not only a Bombay Sapper, but also a paratrooper who had a satisfying career in the Army. Could you please tell us about your stint with 411 Para Field Company and operations Maldives in particular? 411 is a magical number which remained constant in the annals of Indian paratroopers' history. Raised as a section, the troop on 20th November 1941 has grown in strength to a squadron and later a field company with a vibrant change in its composition of men and officer configuration. Participated in all operations, produced and continues to churn out an extraordinary band of all ranks. It is a sapper's dream unit, pride of the Bombay sappers, where every individual is a volunteer paratrooper ready to put in that extra ounce with pride and execute the task with Ilan. I was with the unit at Cargill in 1973-74. I was very fortunate to have been nudged in as officer commanding 411 in August 1988. The intervention operation in Maldives, which gave many accolades to the Indian Armed Forces, was in November 1988. On night 2nd 3rd November, the capital city of Maldives, Mali, was under siege. About 250 armed mercenaries with automatic weapons and a variety of munitions laid siege under guidance of a local leader. President Abdul Gayoom went into hiding and the island nation requested military intervention from friendly countries. A decision was taken by the government of India to intervene and abort the coup. A time urgent intervention operation in Maldives, namely Operation Cactus, was launched on 3rd November 1988. I happened to be in the BM's office, who was Major Vinod Bhatia then. At 10 hundred hours on that day, when he received the call from Military Operation Directorate, warning of unspecified overseas operation to be undertaken by a battalion group of paratroopers. As 411 Parafield Company was the unit responsible for the mounting base arrangements, I mobilized the functional cells to collect the parachutes, chalk mark the mounting base and chalk mark the aircraft. The unit was to provide a section of engineers with a battalion group capable of demolitions. In the next three hours, the area of operation, the type of aircraft, the quantum of force and operational tasks changed more rapidly than the colors at daybreak. By 13.30 hours, I had a vague idea of the canvas of separate tasks besides the mounting base responsibility. Facilitate move of troops from one island to another, reactivation of the airfield lighting if required, restoration of the power supply, restoration of water supply, take up defense and hold grounds in assigned location, undertake demolitions and unexploded bomb clearance tasks. No sapper tasks can be executed without suitable manpower, equipment and material. There was insufficient terrain or operational intelligence. Being a time urgent operation, there was no time for any task oriented training or rehearsal. Surudar Major Shahul Hamid put together the best hands present in the unit. He respected the platoons and we created teams totaling to 1 JC-141 other ranks. A team of 15 persons were handpicked for OBM operation with Havaldar P.D. Bhagat and Havaldar Suraj Singh providing guidance. Havaldar Jaktap and Havaldar Gurmeet, both well-trained earth-moving operators, were assigned the task of repairs to the airfield if required using the engineering machinery to be found on the airstrip. Naik Kulwan, Sapa Dharam Singh and Nikam were to take up the restoration of the electrical supply. Havaldar Paramjit and Naik Kadam were tasked to restore the water supply system on the island. Subhada Anand Singh with Havaldas, Salunke, Netram, Tarsem, Shirke, Naik Indonesia and others were responsible for other tasks as emerged. This was an ambitious and audacious plan, but urgency demanded the risk and out-of-box thinking. At about 1500 hours, the team from the Air Headquarters, Army Headquarters, Indian High Commissioner of the Maldives, Mr. A.K. Banerjee, and the Para Brigade O Group got together in Agra Airfield to finalize the operational plan. 
Misleading of a coral reef hydrographic on a hydrographic chart as a suitable dropping zone was corrected by collective inputs and the operational plan was finalized. At 1730 hours, I, as OC Mounting Base, had to brief the Brigade Commander on the strength of troops ready for embarking in the aircraft. The number of troops reported from the units was less as they could not be replaced by the peacetime responsibilities with their organizations with, and we had to drop one IL-76 aircraft from the flight schedule with a plethora of operational ramifications. Vanguard Company from 6th Para and Brigade Tactical Headquarters was the lead aircraft and 411 was in the second aircraft with the balance of troops of 3 Para and 6 Para. I found myself seated next to Brigadier B.B. Malik, DDJMO. During the flight, which was four hours long, I mentioned to him about the lack of information on the airfield. He then handed me a project report for upscaling the facilities of Kulule Airport by Colonel Gunjan of Sappers. That was a big boon for me to orientate to Hulule Airfield and direct my troops to all over Hulule on that night, 3rd, 4th, November 1988. As soon as the aircraft landed, the sappers made a beeline to the jetty and made contact with 6th Para Vanguard. National Security Services Maldives managed to gather 14 boats of varying size and make from nearby resorts. One OBM operator was assigned to each boat. The local operators, who were very apprehensive and scared to proceed to Mali, the presence of a soldier with a weapon besides him, dedicated to reassure, has given the comfort and an infectious courage to take troops to their destination without faltering. Having seen the boats cast off, I joined Brigade Tactical Headquarters, located about one kilometer north of the jetty, about half an hour later. We saw a ship moving out of Mali and negotiating the channel between Mali and Urule without any lights. We were sure that it had to be an enemy vessel, as no one else would put out to sea at such a time with all the fireworks on. As it sailed parallel to us, it presented a good target, offering us a broadside, albeit at extreme range. 84 mm Carl Gustav teams of 3 para fired on the ship and the hitch could be seen, but the ship managed to sail out. It was later learned that the rockets damaged the ship, causing it to list to starboard and made slow progress only to be intercepted by INS Gudavri and INS Betwa in due course. Brigadier Farouk Balsara assigned to Fort Lemon later that night the duty of safeguarding all assets in the airport, including duty-free shop, and to prevent vandalizing or theft by any civilian, tourist, or service person. The next day was spent making operation the desalination plant and to stop the supply of water troop for troops from Trivandrum by air. No work was required on the runway or electrification. On 8th of November, INS Vitra brought in the hostages and the rebels to Mali. There was a strong concern that the civilians around the jetty may turn violent and attack the rebels, as the town had witnessed 19 killings and several others wounded on 3rd November, all caused by the rebels. Brigadier Balsara had tasked OC 411 to take charge of the safe movement of the rebels from jetty to the jail. Troops from 6th Para assisted him. Meanwhile, Lieutenant MJ Kumar, who could not accompany the unit due to high viral fever on the 3rd of November, joined the unit and took on the task of clearing unexploded bombs and training NSS and continued the good work and let me return to Agra. Operation Cactus had involved all three services, Army, Navy and Air Force, plus many other elements. Seen from each one's perspective, it is a different story. 411 had undoubtedly made immense contribution to the operation. It is best summarized in Brigadier Balsara's words. Maldives opened our eyes to a lot many things. Not the least amongst them was the need to build up our high-risk mission team comprised of officers and men from other arms and services. 
government of Maldives expressed a desire to institute a special medal to all forces who participate in the operation as a token of their gratitude. This offer was politely refused by the government of India. General Babaya, thank you for the account of the operation. You had mentioned about extraordinary band of individuals produced by 411. Could you elaborate on it further? 411 has produced two vice chiefs of army staff, General S. Pattabiraman and General Noble Tamburaj. Three engineering chiefs, General S. N. Sharma, General Ranjan Goswami and General Sanjeev Talwar. A deputy chief, General Hasab Nis, who is presently in chair. In addition, it has contributed 10 lieutenant generals and 18 major generals. It had always at least three serving generals at any time. On the sports front, it has one Arjun awardee, General M. N. Ike in rowing, an Everest summiteer, Kal Anand Swaru, and a cricket bowling wonder, General J. S. Rao, with three hat tricks in one match. And there are several other firsts in various adventure activities. The list is long. General Babaya, your journey with the 411 is outstanding. On this occasion of the bicentenary, what message would you like to give to your young sappers? As a sapper, we seldom are fortunate to template operations. Every operation is different and we need to innovate and adapt. This is the strength of a sapper and modern warfare demands more innovation and quick wit. We need to encourage innovation at every level and be prepared for the next war. It was so engrossing listening to you, especially about the daring tasks in the Maldives. Thank you, General Babayat.